Hello, WSOU. I am John McCooch here, joined by the great Dave Haley of Psychroptic, an Australian death metal band that's got a lot on his plate right now. But first off, Dave, just how are we doing today? Pretty good. Pretty good. Thanks a lot for uh, making the time. Of course. Uh, so just for those that aren't really maybe familiar with Psychroptic, and you know, we got a lot of U.S. listeners, you guys are big in Australia, you know, what are you guys kind of all about? What should people expect? Uh, how long's a piece of string? That's... <laughs> uh... <laughs> Well, we've been uh, around for 20 plus years. Uh, I think we're on our eighth album at the moment. Um, and we just try to write and play um, interesting, challenging, heavy music that we like. Uh, that's the elongated version. The short version would be just Google it. Basically. <laughs> we're going to find out a lot today. Um, yeah. You know, you mentioned that eighth album coming out. You got a brand new album coming out, and you put out that new single, Exodus. And last month, you also dropped the lead single for the album, Ren Asunder. A great example of what to expect from you guys. Um, what made you want to make that one the lead single? Oh, I think we just all agreed that um, Ren Asunder was uh, probably a standout track um, in a way that's maybe a little bit different than. Uh, what we used to pushing first, um, if that makes sense. Uh, it's it's a little bit more of a straightforward song. It's it's pretty, it's fast. It's aggressive. Um, uh, it gets straight to the point. Um, and it was kind of unanimous. We're like, yeah, this is a cool track. We want to play it live. Um, you know, especially with a, a back catalogue of eight albums. That's a lot of riffs. Um, sometimes it's hard to decide what to what to add in the, the set list and, and obviously the songs that you feature first, people are generally um, going to be most familiar with. So yeah, we're like, well, this, this song we have to play live. So let's, let's put it out there first. And then the second one you guys put out, like I mentioned before, uh, Exodus, that one dropped on June 17th. Very recently, you guys just dropped that one, a really great one. Um, it's yeah. got a lot of those hard elements from the previous one, but you guys also did a lot different with that one, maybe not as straightforward as the lead single. Um, so what yeah. made that track special? Um, that one, uh, as opposed to Render Sunnet, we, you know, we all agreed that that, okay, cool, that's, that's the lead song. Uh, everything else, None of us could agree. So in, in a lot of ways, it's, I'm not going to say compromise, but it's like um, everyone's got different favorite tracks on the album, different songs they want to play live. Um, this one, Exodus is definitely a contrast to Rend Asunder. So it, it kind of made sense. It's like, well, this is completely different. Um, it's got some new elements for us. Um, it's, uh, a little bit more of, I guess, the orchestral style stuff um, throughout the track. It's still a heavy track, uh, but it's also got some epic elements. So, yeah, it's completely different. Um, and we could agree on that. that okay, the next song should be something different. Um, and, yeah, we probably want to play this one live too. So that would be the, I guess, the, um, the short reasoning. And... Yeah, it sands all the arguments in the in the group text thread. You guys, you guys have a lot of those discussions about which ones to put on, which ones to not put on. I'm sure that gets a lot going. Um, yeah, yeah, it. I wouldn't say it gets heated, but everyone's got yeah. their own opinion. Friendly like, arguments. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and sometimes you just got to say, well, I mean, I got my way with this track, so how about you? You guys get your way on that one. So there's always a bit of to and fro, and that's good, you know. If it, I'd be a little bit worried if um, every song I suggested was, you know, put out as a single or every song that Joe suggested, you know, um, at least everyone's kind of um, invested in some, some regards. So th that makes it interesting for us. Now transitioning, you know, that new album again, like I mentioned, coming out August 5th available for pre-save and pre-order and all that. Uh, what should we expect in terms of the sound, you know, more songs like Rend Asunder, more songs like Exodus, or is this one just going to be kind of a variety? It's definitely a variety, I think. Uh, it's got some of the, um, you know, one of the tracks even um, reminds me of an earlier track, Observant, that, you know, that's pretty much a live staple of ours. It's, it's one of our, uh, I guess, more well-known fast tracks. Um, yeah, one of the, the, the songs off the album 
definitely reminds me of that. That's something we haven't done for a while. Um, and then um, a couple of the songs are down the Exodus kind of vein, that epic, um, you know, bringing in some of the orchestral elements, which makes the songs sound a, a lot darker and a lot heavier, I think. Um, and just some new twists and turns, you know, it's, it's always a, um, uh, I described it the other day as um, each album is kind of passing the, the baton on to the next album. It's kind of like a relay race. So it's the same band, but we're always changing, um, changing and evolving. So it's, it sounds like Psychroptic, but um, it's got some new stuff in there for sure. So then what's kind of the recording process been like? I mean, obviously, you know, you, you talked about how this is a lot, it's all different. It's all kind of moving in one direction. Um, you know, your last one was in 2018 and the world was so much different uh, just that short four years ago. Um, yeah, but how has this one kind of been different? I mean, it, it seems like this is a really different step in a different direction, but also kind of keep it on that same track. Uh, yeah, it was completely different. Um, logistically, um, I personally don't ever want to work like that again. Um, because we were writing and recording while, um, well, I live in uh, Melbourne and the other, the other guys live in um, Tasmania and one of the guys is in uh, New Jersey. So we're, we're spread out all over the world, but um, during the, you know, the height of the writing and recording process, we were stuck in a, a savage lockdown here. Um, our local government got a bit wacky and, um, that's all we're going to say about that. But um, yeah, we couldn't actually get in the same room together. Um, so it was a very, uh, I'm not going to say disjointed, but it was uh, a very isolating way to work. Um, so we were still sending ideas back and forth, um, but it was, um, I guess the benefits allowed um, us to really individually work on our parts before presenting to the other, because that's, that was the only way we could work. You know, we, we were working solo and then um, submitting our um, ideas to everyone else, um, you know, via email. Um, so in some regards, it was, there were some benefits, but um, I would, would have rather been in the same place as the other guys when actually tracking. So it was, it was challenging um, and we had to work around particular restrictions. So we can only work at certain days, times. And yeah, it was just not an ideal situation. Um, right. But I think in some ways, in some bizarre way, it actually benefited the whole album. It sounds unique, um, sounds, sounds like psychoptic. Um, and I don't think the actual recording of the song suffered from it. I think maybe they were actually enhanced. Yeah, I was, I was thinking that when you were kind of talking about that, the recording sound just very crisp and just very, very fresh. Like, it, it's, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. it's come out pretty well. Uh, how much of this yeah, album yeah. Was, was, you know, were you guys recording with these restrictions going on? Because now we're in 2022, things maybe you've softened. I'm not 100% too sure about you guys over there. But, yeah. I mean, how much of this um, was virtual? How much of this was kind of in the studio? Oh, I mean, it was all, it was all, we were all under restrictions at the time. Yeah. So, um, you know, usually we do, um, track individually, so to speak, but um, uh, Joe being the guitarist and also the recording engineer as well, um, it makes sense for me to track with him and I'm um, comfortable with him, um, which we weren't able to do. I, I was still able to track with um, a good friend of mine, Chris, um, which, you know, we, we made the best out of a, a, a pretty... Uh, oppressive situation i guess you know um you know we were under crazy restrictions where we couldn't actually uh leave a kilometer radius from our house so it was yeah it was completely over the top um but now you know it's it's everything's everything's changed which is yeah. good um so for sure it um yeah you know, i think it probably did benefit because I had to make sure that all of my you know, personal parts were 100% um, locked in before actually tracking. Um, and we were tracking at, um, I didn't have to track the whole album at the, at the one time. You know, I, 
there was actually three separate drum recording sessions for the album, which it's a little bit unusual. Usually we'd like to get it all done in the, in the one time, but um, we had to work around what the limitations were. Yep. And kind of moving on a little bit, you've done work for multiple other bands as well, such as Ruins Dementa and a couple others, uh, but you've been with Psychropic the longest. You, you know, made that with your brother Joe, like you mentioned it before. Um, how have you kind of throughout your career been able to work with a bunch of other bands, put a lot out and still be consistent with Psychropic? Because it's definitely a lot to, to do. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's just, it just comes down to time management, I guess. Um, with Psychropic, uh, I kind of by default have the quote unquote manager role. I'm not going to say I'm a very good manager, but I'm a, a manager nonetheless. Um, so I know our schedule fairly well in advance. So I can, I can work around with the other bands. The other bands know that Socroptic is the priority. Um, but at the end of the day, um, on the flip side, I'm a musician and I want to play with as many different people as possible. So. No one in Psychroptic has got a problem with anyone else playing with anyone else, you know. Just so long as if, if there's things that we've booked and agreed for, then that's that's the priority. Um, you know, and musically and tool-wise, um, Psychroptic is 100% the priority. Um, but everything else works around it. It's, it I've been very fortunate um, to have, uh, I guess, understanding people in the other bands that I do play with. So um, they know that um, Psychoptic takes precedent. So yeah, yeah. But other than that, it's just looking at the calendar and like, well, that's free and that's not. Just by managing it. Um, yeah. you, again, you guys have been around since 1999. Uh, you and Joe founded it, part of it ever since. Um, but you guys have been around. You guys have consistently haven't had really a lot of issues putting out music. So. Have there been any challenges kind of keeping the band around as long as you guys have, or is it just fun rocking out all these years? Oh, it's still fun. I mean, that's, that's the priority. You know, we're all friends outside the band. We still, we hang out uh, other than, you know, doing the music. So that's, right. that's, that's the main thing. And I think that's probably the secret. Um, and it's still fun. Um, I think as soon as it becomes not fun, it's probably not going to be a thing anymore. Um, and we've known at certain points where we've been maybe hitting it too hard. Um, so uh, maybe we need to tap the brakes, you know, maybe we don't need to go on another six week tour back to back with another one, you know? Um, so we know what works and we know what doesn't work. Um, we still enjoy writing and creating. Um, and that, that definitely drives us. Um, you know, even now, like the album hasn't come out yet and we're talking about working on new material and um, how we're excited for that. So um, it's, again, I feel very fortunate to have found a, a like-minded bunch of people that we can jam, jam together. Yeah, it's, at the bottom line, is it's, it's still fun. We still like it. And when it becomes a chore, then we'll probably won't do it anymore. And you guys have already talked about new music, like you said. I mean, it definitely doesn't seem like a chore then. How's that process been? You know, I mean, the album's not even out yet. You guys are already focused on the next step, which is awesome. Uh, but how's that been? Oh, it's good, um, especially that the restrictions have eased. So we can free, you know, freely travel, and that's going to make things easier. But we work, uh, we work consistently, but I guess sporadically as well. Um, so... You know, we're talking about it and there's some ideas being thrown around. Um, and usually how it works is, you know, we'll discuss things and um, then, you know, my email will maybe have two or three song ideas from Joe, you know, just out of the blue. So, uh, and then I, I guess we're away. As soon as, as, soon as it started, we, we're kind of away. But um, I'm not sure if any riffs have actually been put to tape yet uh, but I know there's there's ideas um, brewing for sure um, so yeah yeah it's we don't usually set aside time to write it's usually just a, a continual process so uh, I dare say um, by the end of the year we'll have a few new tracks that we can work on for sure awesome um, you guys got back and doing shows pretty recently about March and April. Um, you got some shows coming up as well. I mean, how great has it been to just get back out there in any capacity? 
Oh, it's been a killer. Um, it was interesting. The first couple of shows, all of us had kind of forgotten not how to play, but we've we forgot the live element. Um, so, oh, okay, you know, nerves are actually a thing, you know, and they do affect your playing. Um, and just all these little things that we, you know, it, took for granted because it was just part of the process, you know. Um, so in some regards, it's been exciting again, Look, relearning how to play live, like re- how to um, interact with the crowd, how to, um, you know, deal with the nerves, deal with uh, all the logistics. So it's been cool in some regards relearning it. Um, uh, Definitely a lot of rust. It was definitely a lot, a lot of rust the first couple of shows, but it's good. We've got, we've got a, uh, some shows coming up this weekend, and then um, you know th- throughout the next month. Um, so it's good. You know, yeah, after the long break, it was reaffirming that we were all pretty excited to get out again. And we were talking about the last uh, the new songs you guys got out, and one of the main things you mentioned before the actual you know listening to it was that this is going to be great live. So mm. in terms of the songs themselves, how much of making it goes into, oh, this is going to be great live, and then just this is just going to be a song that we got planned? Uh, I think it's, it's usually an afterthought. So with the song's finished, and then it's like, oh, cool, that'll, that'll work live. We, we're not really thinking in the process, oh, this will be a great live song. That yep. never really happens. It's always hindsight. Um, and the songs never really turn out how you kind of – envisage them uh it's not until it's recorded and you can take a step back and listen to it um you know because you're you're in it you're in the creative process um you're um in the song so to speak um so once it's done it's all finished you can listen from a you know you got a little bit of time away from it you listen back and you're like okay cool well that one will definitely work live that'll be a fun one um that one's cool for the album but yeah probably go over not very well live. So um, yeah, we're not really writing for the audience. Uh, it's it's an afterthought, so to speak, yeah. Gotcha. And you guys last came to America um, in 2019 before everything went crazy. So any chance that we may get a return to the States in the near future? A hundred percent, yeah, a hundred percent. We've got uh, something we'll announce pretty soon. Awesome. Well, we'll have to stay tuned for that. In the meantime, you guys have that new single, Exodus, out now. Album coming out August 5th, so hopefully everything uh, we'll know pretty soon, like you just said. But thank you so much for joining. Uh, anything else you want to add? No, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for making the time. And, um, you know, we're really looking forward to getting back to North America. Um, the fans over there are killer, um, you know, and some of the best people we've met in the world are, are from the States and Canada. So, um yeah, we, we can't wait to come and play. All right. Well, thank you again, Dave Haley, so much for coming on, drummer of Psychroptic. It has been a pleasure. I've been John McCooch for WSOU. Have a great one.